Good evening and welcome to Chasing the Facts. I'm your host, Sam Chase, and with us this evening is Jen Melanson, who is Chelmsford's Community Services Coordinator. I got the title right. You sure did. You know, I'm about 60% for that. <laughs> you know. But anyway, Jen, I'm, I'm glad you're with us. Uh, and the show tonight, uh, we're going to take a little bit of a different tack. Uh, we have Jen here to talk about uh, upcoming events uh, that are related to uh, LGBT Pride Month, which is June. Right. And uh, the uh, designation of June as, as Pride Month goes back uh, about 25 years, okay, by... Uh, uh, executive order of president, I believe it was Bill Clinton who signed it into into law. So anyway, uh, I'm going to let you take uh, the conversation because this is a subject that I am not that familiar with. So I'm looking forward uh, to listening to you and maybe maybe learning a few things. So I'll I'll let you take the ball and I'll ask questions. How's that? Sure, sounds okay. good. Thanks, Sam. I'm impressed that uh, you did a little research into the history of Pride Month. So I, yes, I did. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> great. And, you know, Chelmsford has um, historically supported a proclamation for Pride mm -hmm. Month, you know, to support um, the LGBTQ plus population in our community. And you may remember, Sam, that last year, it was actually almost a year, exactly a year ago to this day on May 16th last year, the, um, the select board, Chelmsford Select Board, and the Diversity, um, Equity, and Inclusion Committee for mm -hmm. the town held a joint listening session yes. for the LGBTQ plus population. And the purpose of that joint listening session was really to learn directly from community members how Chelmsford can be a better support for our LGBTQ plus population. So, um, you know, I, I attended that listening session last year um, and, and the stories that I heard were really compelling. And I went back through and I watched the recording of it. Anybody who wants to watch it can watch it on the town website. Um, it's there for everyone to see. And, um, you know, some of the things that really stuck out to me that, that folks um, mm -hmm. talked about were that they were really hoping that the town would make more of an effort, more of an outreach to make members of that population feel more included in our community. You know, historically, um, members of, of the gay and queer community have been marginalized. I mean, we've all heard stories um, for many years of violence against mm -hmm. folks from that community. And, you know, even one person who spoke at the listening session last year talked about how just two years ago, her family was the victim of a hate crime when people came to her house on her property and removed the pride flags that they had. And they ended up not putting them back up because they had young kids and they were fearful of their safety and that kind of thing. So unfortunately, you know, those kinds of events are still with us to this day. And so as the community services coordinator, you know, it's part of my role encompasses devising ways that I can help make Chelmsford a welcoming place to all members of our community. Mm -hmm. So That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So after the listening session last year, one of the things that I decided to do as sort of a small step towards hopefully opening things up for the LGBTQ plus community in Chelmsford and making things more welcoming and also raising awareness and, and sort of spreading spreading good news and dispelling myths about the community was, um, you may know that I run the, last year I took over the farmer's market in town. Yes. We expanded it and we've made it a, a farmer's and artisan's market. So at one of our June markets last year, we held a Pride at the Market event. And we invited um, the health department, members of the health department and other um, Rainbow Chelmsford, other organizations in town to come down and to be able to provide information to folks who visited the market just about the LGBT community and about Pride Month and what it's all about. And we had really fun activities. It was a family friendly event. Mm -hmm. We had fun activities for the kids and we had a selfie station and there was information and awareness campaigns and all that kind of stuff. And 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 we had a tremendous response to it. You know, people people in Chelmsford really want this kind of stuff to happen and we heard so many remarks from folks 
who both within and without the LGBT community, those within thanking us for having an event such as this so that they could feel included. And then those without the community who really enjoyed coming and being able to learn more about the community and be able to learn more about becoming an ally of the community and supporting the community. Mm -hmm. So I was really looking for some ways this year to expand upon how we can help support our LGBTQ plus community in Chelmsford. And so we will again have Pride at the Market this year on June 10th. Um, but in addition to that, in the evening on June 10th, we're going to be holding our first annual celebration drag show at the CCA. Okay. So, so this is... Uh, now, you're talking to somebody who is basically, I'll say ignorant. I'll use the word ignorant. I'm ignorant about this stuff. Uh, uh, I don't really know that much about it except what I am able to read. And unfortunately, uh, when you're trying to do any kind of research, uh, it's the most difficult thing, especially if it's online, okay, yeah. and you know how the internet is. Uh, it's hard to separate the fact from the fiction, the myth from, from the, uh, the truth, and so on and so forth. So right. I hope, uh, as we talk a little more about this, I hope you'll get into that, and, and perhaps uh, we can have some of those discussions so that people will feel comfortable uh, that the information that they have at the end of the day is, is accurate information, yeah. and not just regurgitated information. Uh, unfiltered opinion, if you will. Right, exactly. And that's, that was really my main reason for mm -hmm. wanting to come talk to you. I want to make one distinction, though. You said you said that you, know, you, you called yourself sort of ignorant about this. In my mind, ignorance comes more from a place of not wanting to learn, and I don't get that sense from you. I think that oh, no. it's more uh, that you're uninformed, un un uninformed. and yeah. very open to learning. I think that's the, I think the, that is the, the uh, connotation uh, meaning of ignorant, uh, what you just described. I mean, the yeah. actual meaning is simply not to know. Yeah. And, and that's all I was trying to say. Yeah, it's, and I'm I just trying to give know. you a little break. Thank you very much. No, I just don't you know? know an awful lot about this area. Yeah. So I'm, I'm interested to, to learn. And, and, and I hope other people, um, I hope other people feel the same way about this and, and really any other subject that you want to talk about. I think as a community, we're all better off if we can try to have open minds, okay? Exactly. And try not to prejudge people or actions until you have the facts. And make right. sure they're the facts and not somebody's opinion. Right, right. right. And mm -hmm. so, you know, just to talk a little bit about the history of drag, you and I were talking before mm -hmm. we started the show, and, and, you know, I think you're not quite as uninformed as you make yourself out to be because you had some very good points that, you know, people have been impersonating females yes. for as long as, you know, we've been recording time. It, it went on in ancient mm -hmm. Greece um, and in Shakespearean times because it was actually the Christian church that uh, prevented women from performing on stage. It was really against the law. And so men even had even to, uh, even in uh, chorale groups, you know, yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, and if you go back even two three hundred years uh, in the musical history, uh, composers like uh, Bach, for example, uh, used uh, uh, boys uh, exactly. to sing the uh, soprano parts, and, and right. it, it, for the same reason that you're just articulating. Yeah, before they hit puberty and their voices Correct. were higher, right. and right. yeah, so they would use them to impersonate women and. Um, a lot of people m may not know this, um, and I only learned it fairly recently, that the term drag actually comes from um, Shakespearean times when men would dress in long costumes as women, mm -hmm. and they would drag across the floor as they walked across the floor. So that's where the term drag there you go. comes All from. Right. So. right. So it, the term drag comes from men wearing dresses, Th there right? There you are. Okay. Um, Perfect. Yeah. And... You know, even in 17th century uh, Japan, they had an art form called kabuki, mm -hmm. where men dressed as women, and it was very, um, almost a spiritual type of mm -hmm. um, entertainment and dance. And, um, you know, drag actually works both ways. We can have drag queens and we can have drag kings. And Cleopatra actually used to dress as a man quite often to assert her dominance and found that she got better results from dressing as a man than she did as a woman. 
So I will say one thing at this point, folks. The only thing new in the world is the history you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> okay? That's true. That's true. And then, yeah. of course, you know, in the 1920s, we mm. saw a lot of female impersonation on the vaudeville scene. You yes. know, and vaudeville was full of, of men dressing as women and singing and dancing and really... Mm -hmm. Um, you know, almost a par parody of femininity and that sort of thing. And it was pure entertainment, which really, you know, drag hasn't lost that piece mm. of its culture throughout time. From the very beginning, it started off as entertainment, and that's really still what mm -hmm. it is today. So um, I'm kind of excited because at our drag show that we're having on June 10th, um, we actually have a drag king that will be performing. So we have four performers coming. Uh, three are drag queens, and then one is a drag king. So um, that's really exciting because you don't see that all that often on a performance stage. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really just going to be a whole lot of fun. You know, um, a lot of people have a mistaken impression of drag um, and think that there's a certain sexuality to it or a sexual connotation to it. And for the po people who sort of have that in mind, I wish that they could be backstage at a drag show and see the performers getting ready and see all the layers of padding and everything that they wear and all of the makeup that they put on and the way that they do their hair and the wigs and it, and, and just the stage presence that they put on. Mm -hmm. And people would realize that there's actually nothing sexual about it at all. It's pure entertainment. You know, and it's oftentimes, you know, not different than dressing up like for a Halloween costume party and going out and having fun and pretending that you're someone different. Um, it's funny because, uh, again, as, as I've said a couple times, I don't have a lot of exposure or experience in this area, but I can remember uh, not too long ago uh, watching a movie, A Hairspray. Yeah. And I certainly have seen John Travolta in many different productions. He's a very talented actor. And I have to tell you, and this is no word of a lie, my wife can ver verify this because we watched the movie together. I think I, w I was 10 minutes into that movie before I realized, A, that the character he was playing was in fact not a woman. Yeah. And B, it was John Travolta. Yeah. I mean, it, it was, uh, I watched him for 10 minutes not realizing that this actor was, was actually a, a man. I didn't, yeah. that's, how, that's how well he played that part and how effective the, uh, the makeup yeah. uh, was. Now, some people probably listen to what I just said and said, well, boy, Chase, you weren't paying attention. Well, I was, all yeah. right? And again, I know who John Travolta is. Right. And the minute it dawned on me that this, this character was, was in drag, as they say, yeah. then I realized, oh, my Lord, that's Travolta, right? right. And I could see it, right? But uh, that, I tell that story just to illustrate the point you were trying to make. It is entertainment, really, right. is what it is. Right. And they're really, if you watch that movie, Hairspray, which I think is a wonderful movie on several different levels, it has a lot of good messages in it. Yeah. Uh, very entertaining. Uh, I, I think you understand that that is, uh, has nothing to do with any overt sexual uh, situation at all. Right, uh, right. Yeah, it's a myth that yeah. folks who dress in drag are, you know, pedophiles or sexual mm -hmm. predators. There's absolutely no evidence of that. If you look hard enough on the internet, you'll find people who claim that that's the case. Mm -hmm. But that goes to what we were talking about in the very beginning about sort of being discerning about the kind of information that you take in and knowing the sources and knowing what's credible and, you know, what is an agenda that somebody else is trying to advance. Mm -hmm. So, um, but the, you know, the, talking, inter the internet is the absolute worst place for that kind it's of like bad the, information. Yeah, the <clears throat> internet is like the best and worst place, right? Because yes. you can get really great information from the internet, but then you can get really terrible information as well. But you know, in in you bringing up um, John Travolta in Hairspray, you mm -hmm. know, my example of that was going to be Robin Williams in The Birdcage which is another fantastic movie. Which I've with, never seen. Oh, you definitely have to see that one because it's very, very entertaining. Um, Robin Williams and Nathan Lane are just absolutely hysterical mm -hmm. in the movie. And 
there's some dressing and drag in that movie and it's just it's fantastic and it's pure pure entertainment and it's 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 pretty innocent entertainment yes. as well. And we all know Robin Williams from Mrs. Doubtfire. Mrs. Doubtfire. You know, is another one that he did. So, um, and again, certainly nothing, you know, deviant or, or um, sexually inappropriate about that movie mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. well. And, you know, just to go back to the listening session that was held last year, one of the residents who attended the listening session, who was a member of the LGBT plus community, um, at the end of what she was saying, she said, I would really love to see a pride celebration here in Chelmsford. And that one comment got thunderous applause from everyone who was attending that listening session. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think it's important that when the town makes overtures like this towards other you know, communities about please tell us how we can help you and how we can make you feel more comfortable in our community, that we really listen to what they tell us and then we follow up on that. You know, because it's, it's, it's performative if we don't do that. You know, it's, it's, it's one thing to say, tell us what you need and to listen, but then not to do anything and not to take any action does not show people that... Which that, unfortunately is all too typ typical of government. Exactly, okay, exactly. At all levels. And it's often mm -hmm. unintentional. Right. You know, I don't want to make the mistake of, of, of um, insinuating that it's intentional and that it's, right. you know, um, meant to be performative. I mean, uh, it's most often unintentional, unintentional just because, you know, we get busy and we have lots right, to exactly, do. Exactly. Um, but, you know, I wanted to make this a priority for my office to make sure that, you know, mm -hmm. I'm following up and doing my part. Um, in what we heard in the listening session last year. So that's really why I, I wanted to put together, not just um, continue the Pride celebration at the market, but see what we could do mm -hmm. um, more to celebrate this community. So this, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but this particular event that we're talking about, uh, the drag show uh, that will actually um, be, uh, let's see, I did print this out to make sure I get it right. Yeah. So uh, this will happen on June 10th uh, and what I didn't do was look up to see what day of the week that is. That's a know? Saturday. That is a Saturday. Okay, yeah. so it's Saturday, June 10th, uh, 7 to 9 p.m. Right. at the CCA facility. Yeah. And uh, you can get tickets uh, if you uh, want to. You can go up on the CCA uh, website, um, and uh, you can get all the information there. And we have ticket options, adult tickets, uh, which is... 18 and up, $20, and if you're a uh, seasoned citizen like I am, senior <laughs> citizens, uh, get a 50% discount. So exactly. you can get a ticket for $10. So those are relatively uh, inexpensive uh, uh, prices, I think, for, the, for, for a two hours worth of entertainment. Absolutely, and you know, you'll, <clears throat> pay, you'll pay way more than that mm -hmm. to go into Boston to see performer, performers perform this type of show or any other type of show. Exactly. Um, and, and you get to support, you know, the local community. And so, yeah, June 10th is a Saturday. And there and isn't so, a bad seat in the house. I mean, the, there uh, definitely isn't. The CCA, uh, I've heard it said uh, often that one of the drawbacks is that the auditorium isn't large enough to support, you know, full scale. But on the flip side of that is that when you have shows like this, and I can think of other types of shows. Yeah where actually a more intimate setting is more appropriate, where you want, exactly. you want the 250 or so, which is, I think, about what that hall sees. Yeah, I think we're selling 150 tickets, so okay. it can be a little bit smaller There than you that. go. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it's perfect. It's a perfect venue for things uh, like that. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and this kind of performance is the type mm -hmm. where the performers will sometimes interact with the crowd, too, yes. which is always really fun. And so we're setting up... Um, the auditorium in that way so that there will be sort of a center runway mm -hmm. um, that the performers can walk up and down the runway mm -hmm. and then with people seated on each side. There'll be great music and great lighting and we, these are professional performers. So these are not, you know, folks that we've pulled off the street and asked to put a dress on. These are these are people <laughs> that they, they do this. this. Is They're what professionals they do. Right. and this is what they do, right? right? Um, but, but back to um, that day of June 10th. Mm -hmm. So so we'll kick off um, Pride at the Market at 11 a.m. on the Town Common. On Saturday. Um, on Saturday. The market, uh, market on the Common, we changed the hours for this year. 
Last year we were um, one to four, but this year we pushed it back a little bit earlier in the day. So we're 11 to two this year, which should help with, you know, not being out in like the really extreme heat of the day during mm -hmm. the summer. So we'll kick things off at the market with Pride at the Market from 11 to 2. And again, our health department will be with us and some other um, community organizations to raise awareness. And there'll be this will be a very family-friendly event again um, where children and, and families and dogs will have dogs, you know, which mm -hmm, everybody mm -hmm. loves. And um, there'll be opportunity to, to for little prizes and selfie station and that kind of thing. And then we'll take a little break in the afternoon and we'll get set up for the show over at the CCA. And then at 6.30, doors will open at the CCA. This is an adults-only um, show so um, because drag shows can tend to be a little bit risque. And I say that in the same way that a comedy show can be risque. You know, certainly not like a burlesque show, but more just in, in the name of fun and laughter and comedy. There's a lot of jokes that go that fly at a drag show. So we wanted to make sure that we're being appropriate um, for our audience. So this is an adults only 21 plus show. Mm -hmm. um, and there will be a cash bar as well. Oh. So uh, my my new son-in-law is a, a really terrific bartender, formerly of the House of Blues. And he will be um, crafting a, a special craft cocktail to uh, be served at this night, as well as regular beer and wine that we'll have as well. So have that will your, be. Have you got your license select yet from the select board? You... So the CCA has a license already. Oh, I did, oh, they, oh, I did not know that. They do, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, there you go. They do. So that's why we're, well, that makes we're able yeah, to they, do this. They, they should. Yeah. Okay, they should. Yeah, because they have other brand events yes. that they've had alcohol before, jazz brunch, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, so we're able to take advantage of that um, by having that. We won't have food, but you know, cash mm -hmm. bar, and it's just going to be a really, really great time and a time for you know us in Chelmsford to celebrate the community, the LGBTQ mm -hmm. plus community, and celebrate Pride Month. But then just to get together and have a good time and have some entertainment. Yes, and it's coming early enough in the month, June tenth, uh, so that you've still got twenty days left in the month for. You know, like you said, this is sort of like a kickoff exactly. uh, event. So. Yeah, Lowell also hosts um, a Pride Day. I'm not sure when theirs is mm -hmm. this year, but I'm positive that it's not the same day as ours because we didn't want to be competitive with them. Um, but, you know, this is kind of a big deal for us here in Chelmsford mm. because, because we haven't done this sort of thing before, but this is what people have asked us for. So, you know, we're wanting to come through, and I know that we're probably close to being out of time here on the show, but I wanted to share a, a quote just about drag and what it is um, from an author named Gail Abu Nazar. And she writes that drag is not limited to just gender performance. Drag incorporates societal roles, breaks taboos, and elevates performance art. Its long history and political power assert how relevant it is a means of expression and creativity. Mm -hmm. Drag artists can be themselves or someone else. Drag is limitless. It unquestionably shapes the modern world of art, and it continues to do so this day. So we're really celebrating this show as not just an expression of the community, but an expression of art in general, which is what the CCA is all about. Mm -hmm. I think so. Uh, and of course, we've had uh, a very recent change in uh, directorship. Yeah. For the CCA, uh, can you take a, you, you've got about six minutes, so I'd like to take some time and, and talk a little bit about that. You. Uh, yeah. Before the show, uh, you mentioned that you had uh, been speaking with uh, Lauren Cochran, who yeah. is the new director. So what do you see uh, uh, on the horizon, you know? Yeah, so I mean, we have this, and I'm going to, I'm going to assume that we'll have uh, more events that are more community-targeted, if Absolutely, you will. yeah. Okay, so. Yeah, I think Lauren has mm -hmm. um, lots of great plans, um, everything from changing up some of the logistics that the way that the CCA mm -hmm. runs. I feel a little badly because I think I know you want to have her on your show and she's probably going to want to talk about some of this stuff, but I'm going to out some of her plans. Oh, no, 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 now. because I, this is all, I mean, it's all part of, it's, it's you know, it's all part of the of the whole mentality for yeah. why the CCA exists. And right. it's supposed to be a community 
uh, based uh, activity. So right, and a not lot of people and not limited to only certain types of correct, community. Correct, correct, right, and that that's the point that we're trying to make here. Exactly, exactly. exactly. Yeah, but um, you know, Lauren is definitely has jumped in um, full force. Some people mm -hmm. may not realize that she's also a teacher. She's retiring this year, so she's yes. got about a month left of teaching. So she's kind of juggling and doing yeah. double duty. You couldn't right even now. give the woman a break. Yeah. No vacation for her. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, uh. But like I said, she's jumped in full force mm -hmm. to take over the CCA, and she's got some really great plans. And one of the things we talked about this afternoon was even. Um, her being able to have folks come to my farmer's market on Saturdays to promote events at the CCA and even sure. sell tickets for the for the events mm -hmm. at the CCA. So it's, you know, one of the things I love about my job is how I get to collaborate with other town departments and department heads and, and entities within the community. And, and this is just, you know, an example of, of that. And it's it was terrific to work with Lexi um, while she was here. And, you know, now that Lauren has taken the mm -hmm. helm of the CCA, um, I think that it's going to be a really great um, partnership between us. Well, I'm glad that it's it's taken a long time for that particular focus, I think, to get the recognition it, it deserved. I mean, we had uh, Sue Gates for, what, 10 years? Yeah, yeah, very uh, outstanding. Did a, dedicated. basically managed that whole situation uh, on a volunteer basis. Right. And she did a, a from what I can see, she did a, a, a wonderful job. The problem with a volunteer is uh, not that you're not going to get the level of performance out of them. If somebody is not, if somebody is a volunteer, the way they're viewed by other members of the community is not the same as if you have a paid professional right. and, and, and that uh, uh, focused on that particular activity. And that's just very unfortunate. Right. I mean, a volunteer, and I can think of many cases where I've seen volunteers do a much better job at things than paid yeah. uh, professionals, but you know, for most people, it's perception. Yeah, there's okay? something about paying someone that ends up, that exactly. lends an air of legitimacy that, to the position. You, that's I could not have said that any better. You said it perfectly, and why shouldn't you? Because you're a doctoral candidate, okay, <laughs> so you you have to you have to be uh, very conversant with that type of uh, expression. So, no, I just uh, uh, I feel it's uh, very important, and I felt very uh, happy when uh, Susan was retiring that the town manager and the select board together uh, immediately took the position that this was something that had to be uh, funded in some fashion. I know there, were, there was uh, fits and starts about how it should be done, and, sure. which is fine. I mean, because you're, you're trying to explore what makes the most sense in terms of, you know, from a cost perspective and other things. Right. And, but I think they, they arrived at the right answer. I you agree. Know, and they hired uh, Lexi. And I had the pleasure of having Lexi on my show uh, just before her departure. And I think I had spoken to her maybe once before for a grand total of a minute. But having, but spending a half an hour with her, yeah. I mean, She's a very dynamic I, I'm sitting woman. here saying, oh, I wish you weren't leaving, yeah. you know? But understand why, why, she's, why she's moving on, I, I get that. But I, it, it's hard for me to imagine that we could get a better replacement than Lauren Cochran. If you look at yeah. her background and what she's done in the Chelmsford Public Schools for the theater arts program there, she's done a bang up job. I haven't talked to anybody yeah. that has a bad thing to say about what he, she has been able to do. So and and her expertise is, is impressive. I can tell yes. you that when I sat with her this afternoon and um, Dan, who's the technical director yes. over at the CCA, who is also incredibly knowledgeable and incredibly wonderful. Mm -hmm. I sat with them and I listened to them talk, and <clears throat> it was a whole language I didn't understand, you know? And, and I was just so grateful that there are these two people who I could work with to take this idea of mm -hmm. wanting to have a drag show to celebrate our community and actually bring it into actuality because they know how to do this. They know how to make it happen. You know? Exactly right. Well, Jen, we're running out of time. We've got about 25 seconds. Any parting shots you'd like to leave with the audience? I'll just say that for folks who want to really have a good time in the community, come out on June 10th to the drag show at the CCA. You can get tickets 
at the box office or online through the CCA. And if anybody has questions that they want to talk to me about with this, they can give my office a call or stop in during my office hours at Town Hall. Perfect. Thank you very much. And we'll have you back.